Hi, John. It's Michael Persh again. How are we doing? Yeah, I'm good, Michael. How are you? Sorry about that. No, not a problem at all. It, it's... Timing was great. I just finished that interview just that second. Uh, good, good timing. Uh, always a great pleasure to say hello, mate. How are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm great. I, I'll tell you what I'm doing right now as we... It doesn't stop the interview happening, but we just have to have one little pause. I'm taking my wife's car to get a quote on having the the rear bumper replaced because she backed into somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds serious. So I've got to do that, but um, uh, so we can we can do this one one of two ways. We can be doing the interview and we'll have a have a have a, a break while I, I hand the car over to these people to do the quote. That's that's fine. The the wonders of editing, mate. We can do anything. That's exactly right. Yeah. I mean, if you stay on the line, you can get, you can you can hear the quote on the cut. Well, that'd be you exciting. Say, that'd be exciting for the listeners, I'm sure. I'm <laughs> kidding. I'm kidding. <coughs> uh, yeah. Speaking of exciting, it is a very exciting year for the Angels, Don. And 40 years is is an unbelievable achievement. Really is. Well, thanks very much, Michael. I and mean, uh, yeah, that does feel incredibly. Uh, great. Um, the band, we, you know, we're, as we speak at the moment, we're in the middle of this tour that we're doing the Red Hot Summer Tour with Susie Quattro. We've been playing to six to eight thousand people every night, um, and it's it's just absolutely sensational. The response that we're getting to the band, the the acceptance of Dave Gleason as our singer. It, I mean, it's not a new thing anymore. Dave's coming up three years now, so out, out of the forty, three years of Dave Gleason. And the front row, uh, and he's just a, he's just wonderful. He's a great guy. He's a great singer. He's a fantastic front man. And so the, the band's made, you know, it's made a transition. I, I came and saw the gig up at Manham a couple of weeks ago, and uh, and I totally agree. And and the two the two things that I came away thinking about about your uh, your set up there was I couldn't wipe the smile off my face. Dave Gleason just seems to have. A magic that he's he's just having the time of his life, and that rubs off on you guys. I've really never seen you guys looking so happy on stage. It's because we never have been that happy. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Oh, we, we keep threatening to find Rick for moving on stage <laughs> <laughs> because Rick's having a great time too. He can't help it; he just looks across and puts a big grin on his face. It's a bit out of character. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and also, John, the the thing that really struck me. And and the you know, the fact that you you played talk the talk the new single in the set, uh, yeah. the forty years is the legacy is the songs the because the new song stands up so well against the others but the endearing thing over those forty years is how great those songs are. Yeah, well, thanks very much for saying that too. Because, uh, I again, I I have to agree with you. I've actually knocked out that uh, talk the talk's going down as well as it is. It, it seems to be going down like it's. Like they were, you know, they're seeing it as one of our big songs, even though they don't know it. It's a, uh, it's obviously fairly immediate, which is, uh, it sort of reminds me of the old days when we, you know, I'd write Shadow Boxer and then we'd just put it on stage and see what the audience thought of it, you know. That's kind of, you know, that's just an example, but yeah. I, I must, I must admit, I had the same feeling because you know, often uh, an artist will will play a, you know, introduce a new song in their set, and and you'll hear this sort of groan from the audience, and everyone will go off to the bar or whatever, and that did not happen. And the, you know, the momentum did not stop, and I, I really did notice that. It was wonderful. Yeah, I agree, Michael. Just uh, uh, we have to have a pause because I've just arrived at the crash repair place. Now, 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 my listeners are going to be very interested to see if it's a good quote or not, John. Okay. Yeah. Uh, can you call me back in five minutes?
Mark. John, how's it going? Yeah, good. It's all happening here. Are you, you okay? Do you want me to call you back? No, no, it's all fine. Good, good. So, are we happy with the quote? Uh, no, that takes about uh, half an hour. Oh, okay, right. On. Okay. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll, we shall wait with bated breath, indeed. <laughs> yeah. We, 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 we touched on the, the new album, mate, and I want to, uh, I want to talk about it because uh, apart from the single, the, the whole album is, reminds me of, of Classic Angels. There is not a bum tune on the album, and, and it's so lovely, uh, history-wise, to, to A, have it uh, recorded at, at Alberts in Sydney, but also to, uh, to have some b- done by Mick Wordley here in Adler. Oh, yeah, Mick's fantastic. Um, I love his studio, too. It's a... It's a, uh, it's, a, it's a great space. We, we, we've become good friends, us and Mick. He, he uh, is. And so, yeah, I mean, that, mate, that, I've got to tell you that the, the whole experience of, of being in the Angels these days is, is absolutely fantastic. And, um, you know, we've made two, two albums now we've made. We're proud of both of them. I think this one's, you use the expression classic Angels album. I think it is too. Um, you know, to me, the, this is, you know, sort of back to basics, twin guitar, bass drums, great songs and, you know, harmonies. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a, it sounds simple, but, you know, uh, sometimes, sometimes it's not that easy to achieve, but I think we really did, we did it this time. And a lot of these songs were written out in the road as well, you know. We're driving down the highways because we did so many live gigs. So we're sort of driving down the highways singing melodies with each other and harmony ideas and stuff. It's a fantastic way to do it. Actually, I, I, I think I, I mentioned this to Rick when I spoke to him not so long ago, but uh, I had a chat with Dave Gleeson just after he started playing with you guys, and, and one of the things that he mentioned was when he was on the road with the Jets, uh, one of the things they used to do uh, to while away the hours was was have competitions to whistle the great Lee Brick breaks of, of Rick Brewster. I thought that was just... Uh, that's that To me, that was just... Uh, Said a lot, so much about the the melody and the and how how love those angels tunes are. Yeah, they are fantastic. I, you know, the first person told me that I didn't realise he did that. I knew that he and his brother used to have competitions about singing angel songs, and if they get words wrong, they have to pay money or something like that. But, <laughs> but uh, yeah, Dave. I mean, Dave's obviously uh, uh, a huge fan of the band. I'm, I di- I never really even knew that when I called Dave and said, "Look, we're looking for a singer," because I could left the band. And no matter what he says, that's exactly what he did do. Um, that uh, you know, I called Dave and I said, "Mate, we're looking for a singer. Are you, are you interested?" He said, "You he said, you're going to be kidding." And I thought, I thought he was going to say, "I wouldn't dream of it." <laughs> what he meant was like it just it knocked him off his socks, you know. And he um, and he said. He then said to me, mate, what an honour. He said, I'm, I cut my teeth on you guys. I'm a huge fan. So, um, you know, <laughs> and that, that's nearly three years ago now. I can't believe that, you know, of this 40 years we've been together with, you know, three of them have been with Dave. So. It, it has flown indeed. And, and correct me if I'm wrong, there's a, there's a, I, I'm up in the Adelaide Hills and I believe there's a, uh, an Adelaide Hills connection on how Dave ended up being in the band, that, that he uh, he apparently came along to a Brewster Brothers gig in Handorf and got up and had a sing. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah, was sort of, I, I looked out into the audience. We had a big crowd there, too. And I, was, I, I look out at the audience and I go, I know that guy. <laughs> that's Dave Gleeson. And, you know, he sort of sidled up closer and closer to the stage and so just leaned across. I said, hey, Dave, what are you doing down there? Come, come up and sing a song. <laughs> and he, and we, we did about three or four Angel songs. And I looked at Rick and Rick looked at me and, I, and Rick said, we got to get this guy in the band. Fantastic. That's a so, great story. About a week later, I called him, you know. Magnificent. It was, uh, it was fantastic. And on the, on the subject of Dave, everyone, including Dave, has, has uh, had a hand in writing tunes on the new album, and that's, and that's really nice as well to, to have input from everybody. Uh, it's, it's incredible. It's fantastic. You know, uh, the, very, the first album we did with Dave... Uh, the, to the streets, uh, which I'm, by the way, really proud of. I think it's, I, I, I love the album, but I, I will say this: it's, it's in a way more of a Brewster Brothers meets Dave Gleason album than an actual Angels album in a way, um, because we sort of had all these songs which we might have recorded as the Brewster Brothers. I just wait, hang on one sec. Mm. You know, I, I, I just got to tell somebody to call me back. I, I think this sure. is all my fault <laughs> because I'm on a schedule. Hang on a sec.
Michael? Yeah. Sorry about that. No problem at all. Yeah, he's uh, taking up interviews for me. <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't be much longer. i got five minutes. No problem. Um, and also Sam and Nick uh, co-writing a tune, Book of Law, is a, is a great tune as well. Yeah, isn't that great? That's, uh, my son Sam, uh, Nick came up with that. So we, uh, Dave said, well, Nick, why don't you sing it? Um, and, you know, because Nick's a great singer, you know. So, yeah, you know, Dave's lovely, you know. He's, he, he's not precious about anything. He just sort of said, Dave, you know, Nick, you sing the song, you know. So hey. we, we, we did some shows at the bridge. We actually did the Adelaide shows coming up that we're doing in, at Jive in March. We're going to, we're actually going to do what we did in Sydney because it went really well. We, we did the album. Uh, we were our own support band. We, we did we did the new album, and then and then we came back on and after a little break, and then um, did all the hits. Awesome! That's a, that's great. Yeah, so we're going to do that at job. You have to come along for that. Oh, looking forward to it indeed. I, I think I've got uh, you guys Thursday night, uh, and the the Stones on the weekend. So it's going to be a big week. Oh yeah, fantastic. Uh, the Stones thing would have been great to do, but we we can't do it. We're doing the. Uh, we're doing mid and Oh, oh, shame! That would have been great. The, the other tune I quick show with, with Jimmy Barnes. Fantastic. The, the other tune I quickly wanted to mention, which which we've heard before, or certainly Ross Wilson fans have heard before, and you've done a a great version of the song you and uh, Ross wrote. I come in peace. It's a great tune as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's actually Rick and Ross. Rick, Rick Sorry. Rick, uh, right. He wrote that. Uh, oh, I can't remember how long, how many years ago. It's quite a few years it's a ago. It's a while ago. Yeah. With Ross and. And uh, Joe Cock has had a hit with it, and uh, so we thought, well, so we'll do our own version, you know. So we we did it. It's I love it. It's a great song. And and it's also very special, John, to have to have the late great Chris Bailey uh, featured on the album as well. The 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 night at Theberton Theatre back in April last year was for, for for us in the audience was a very special night, and I'm sure it was for you. Oh, yeah, well, it was incredible for for, for me. Uh, uh, um, you know, totally um, in, in a, in a, in a uh, very much a grief situation. You know, Chris was a great friend. He was a great band member. He was he stayed in the band when Doc and Buzz left, and so he's a very loyal kind of guy. And we we loved Chris, and he's one of the best bass players this country's ever known. And and uh, so number one for him to be on the album itself, uh, and knowing how. How much of a struggle it was for him to come to the studio, but he came and for three days running and played bass on on those five tracks that he's on, and and uh, and then for him to hand the baton over to my son Sam, and he handed that baton to Sam because he came to a gig. He actually came to the gig and watched Sam play, and then he went up to Sam and he said, "Sam, I'm handing the baton to you. You're fantastic." That's and such such a great feeling. You know, of course, the um, the concert for Chris. Just three weeks before that concert, Chris was saying, uh, he said, I'm feeling good. The doctors are saying that they want me to go. And he said, I'll probably get up and play one song with Gang of Jang and one with with you guys. And I said, fantastic, mate. That's great. Uh, sadly, he was dead a week later. Mm, so he missed it by two weeks, but he knew all about it. And he, he was blown away by the whole thing. And so was I. I mean, I organised that concert, but it, it's not my concert if, we all did it, and and, I, and when I say we all did it, I mean the Australian, the Adelaide public as well, because I, to me it was an absolute Adelaide thing, an Adelaide celebration of Adelaide's music and Chris Bailey. Um, to get 1,800 people along and be able to give Chris's family a, 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 a over $100,000 to, you know, look after the little little uh, son that he had. Mm-hmm. Uh, wonderful little kid called Ollie. Um, it was really special, and you know, just, just, just you know, so many great people got, got involved. Brian Gleeson got involved, and and Poster George, and, you know, George Hustle, the uh, the Hilton, and the Hilton were fantastic. They gave us twenty rooms for the artists, and and you know, Abus gave us three vehicles and two, you know, like uh, mini buses and stuff, and you know, for all that. To come together so so wonderfully, it was just uh, just a, uh, unbelievable. And, and and I'm sure all that is was was a testament to to how how much Chris was loved in Adelaide and 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 how you know he, he he's so sadly missed and he you know much was said what a 
what he was the you know the the loveliest guy in rock and roll and, and I've had the pleasure of having him on the show many times and and I totally agree he was just so generous and uh, and such a great guy and we he is sadly missed indeed mate yes exactly uh, and and his legacy lives on and it lives on in this album and we're very proud of that Absolutely, and that is a very special part of Talk the Talk. And uh, I wish you every success with the album, mate. I know the tour is going exceptionally well, as you said, and I'm I'm so glad I got to see it. And I look forward to the gigs at Drive. They're going to be big fun. They are. They are. Thanks very much, Mark. It's lovely to talk to you, and uh, and we'll do it again soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much, and good luck with a quote on that bumper bar. <laughs> Thanks, mate. <laughs> I'll see you later. All the best. Bye bye.